It's time once again for that business show with Jamie Maloney on 1250 Wins WHNZ, where business becomes show business. Jamie is a leading Tampa Bay real estate agent and featured on the Wall Street Journal's list of top 100 real estate agents in the nation. Jamie invites you to list your home with him today and learn more at tampabayradio.com. Now, live in studio and promoting the entrepreneurial spirit that drives the American economy, your host, Jamie Maloney. Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday and welcome to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Weekday mornings at 8 a.m. here on 1250 WHNZ. A business variety show, a little something different each and every morning as I talk to many different professionals, business, civic, and political leaders about what they are doing in Tampa Bay to make a difference. So as always, I invite you to tune in each and every weekday morning. Take a break from all the political news and sports talk that dominates our airwaves just a little bit too much with a show with a positive message about what is going on in our community. As always, I invite you over to my website, tampabayradio.com. Over there, all shows available on demand. And also, you'll see that I sell real estate over there. So feel free to peruse all the local real estate listings. And if you're looking going to sell your home in the Tampa Bay region, please reach out to me through the Sell Your Home link on the homepage for a free home valuation. Joined in studio by the lovely uh, Stella Judicelli, co-hosting with me today. Stella, good morning. How are you doing today? Good morning, Jamie. I'm excellent. Happy Friday, everyone. Thank you very much. We got a great segment planned for the last part of this show, the Wine, Women, and Shoes event coming up on November 20th, a Friday at the Renaissance Tampa International Plaza <laughs> Hotel, uh, about, uh, or I mean, a uh, event designed to help the uh, uh, Children's Cancer Center. So very excited to be talking with the uh, ladies from that event on the uh, second part of the show. So thank you very much for getting them uh, in the uh, studio today. Yes, and so uh, I'm here with uh, my very good friend, uh, Lynn, who is just behind me, if uh, you guys on, uh, are on the live stream. and uh, Oh, yeah, you're putting her on the spot. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, Lynn uh, Ninis is uh, a very successful real estate agent uh, from uh, um, a town close to Philly in Pennsylvania. Uh-huh. And so she was driving um, in uh, Bayshore Beautiful a year ago, and so one of my listing called me, bought a property, referred her whole family-in-law, everyone moved from uh, from Philadelphia to uh, they're all in Bayshore Beautiful now and it's such an amazing good family they adopted me yeah well wow. very generous well, everybody people. loves you Stella yeah absolutely. <laughs> you know that and all the guys out there are chasing you so you know you're just a very fascinating girl and I'm very happy to have you in my show you know most shows so <laughs> thank then. you yeah most of uh, of the shows so last night we were at Burns um one of the family members of Lynn uh, her sister-in-law invited us to Burns so we had a little party and uh, Atolina to uh, to join us. Yeah, so I'm, I'm happy she's here. And actually, she's going to be on TV in November, right, Lynn? Yeah, <laughs> yeah she's uh, doing uh, House Hunters. Yeah. And she's going to be um, uh, well, very featured cool. I have to do a segment in November. On that, yes. yeah, I want to do a segment on that when yeah. that comes up. Yeah. So, uh, Also, on the uh, second part of the show, we'll be talking with uh, Dr. Steve O'Brien, child psychologist and creator, creator of the Life at Home app, an interesting little app that is designed to assist parents uh, communicate with their children through the use of a <laughs> smartphone or a tablet device. So stay tuned for that on the uh, second segment. But up first, David Chittister founded Florida Funders, a Tampa-based company that connects local businesses with investors and financing in 2014 after noting that Tampa Bay region was losing too many young promising entrepreneurs to places like Silicon Valley and Austin. David, welcome to the program today. Thank you. Good so, to be here. David is in studio today because there's an amazing event going on here in Tampa today <laughs> from 11 to 2 called the Uber Pitch. So David, I'll let you take over and tell the uh, uh, listeners a little bit about what's going on. Sure. From 11 o'clock till 2 o'clock today, 11 o'clock this morning till 2 o'clock this afternoon, uh, Entrepreneurs will have a chance to ride in an Uber for 15 minutes and make a pitch to an investor. So we lined up five Uber cars, and they will be everywhere from St. Petersburg to USF in downtown Tampa. And the rider will, or the the entrepreneur will go onto the Uber app and request a ride using a, a TB pitch code. And if there's a ride available with an investor in it, it'll show up. The Entrepreneur gets 15 minutes to ride around the block or wherever they drive around and make a pitch to an investor. And this is all free of charge, too, correct? Everything's free of charge. Uber's picking up all the costs of the drivers, and the entrepreneurs are basically taking their time to meet with the investors and all the investors we lined up are volunteering their time as well to meet with the entrepreneurs. Now, Uber has done this in a couple of other cities too. So this is kind of getting some national attraction then, correct? They started, they did it first in San Francisco, their home base. And then they did one in Philadelphia, I believe in April, and it had tremendous response. And so they were looking for another location to do their third one. 
They contacted me about four weeks ago, three or four weeks ago, and said, would you like to help us out and be our partner in organizing this? Do you know if there's any good stories from previous events, uh, similar events that they had like that in San Francisco? And they, they had a lot of interest, thousands and thousands of calls of people trying to get a ride with an investor. And uh, unfortunately, it's totally random. So there's no way I get all kind of calls and phone calls and emails. How can I get a ride with an investor? <laughs> but it's totally random. And it is in the other uh, cities where they did the, the events, they just go on there and they, if they're lucky at that time that they request and there's one available in their area, then they'll get a ride. I think the, you said in Philadelphia, there was like 40,000 requests. They, they had 40,000 requests in wow. Philadelphia and only about 40 entrepreneurs got to ride with an investor. Wow. So, so, so if now, you get each, that today, you're going to be very lucky. Yeah. Now, each request doesn't mean that's a separate company. Obviously, they can do multiple requests. They can keep requesting and requesting until they, they might get a ride. So they can request for three hours. It just happens to be the luck of the draw if there's going to be one that just dropped off an entrepreneur and is ready to pick up another one right when they make that request right in the area. Okay, so if they use the code TBPITCH on the Uber app, and if they're lucky enough to uh, you know meet the, beat the demand that's going to be out there for this, they're going to get to spend 15 minutes in this car with an investor. What if, the, what if their idea just totally sucks and the investor wants to stop the car and get this guy out of here right now? <laughs> I mean, are they going to cut these guys out? I mean, when you're pitching your stuff to like the Sharks, they don't like, get the heck out of here, man. Let's get somebody else in here. Yeah. Are you guaranteed that 15 minutes? <laughs> uh, unfortunately, they uh, uh, the investor is is going to be in the car for 15 minutes, even if it's not a great pitch. Uh, but it but it opens the eyes of the investors as well to what's locally here and and right. who is out there and what they're what they're pitching and those those kinds of things. Where these entrepreneurs a lot of times obviously don't get a chance to meet with an investor, and the investor they're, they're basically required or we've asked them not to just listen to the pitch, but actually give some coaching and some advice while they are uh, taking the ride. So it's it's more than just sitting there and listening. It's, I think you should do this, or maybe you should meet somebody, or you're, you're too early for funding, and, and maybe you should mm -hmm. do this before you can really get some serious interest in funding. Is there any follow-ups uh, with us? So are we going to know what has happened from those um, people meeting? And, I, and, and, you know, we're going to know, like, this investor invested with that person. Like, are we going to have a feedback? Yes. Okay. I, I will compile all that. I will talk to all the investors. I lined up all 10 investors, and I will talk to all the investors <laughs> about any uh, feedback that they have. Uber also will give us the data for everybody that applied and did not get a ride. And they've asked me to follow up with those people as well to see if there's any interest that we could find investors and line up investors with entrepreneurs. So this is a people. great lead source for what you do uh, naturally in your company, Florida Funders, which is designed to pair entrepreneurs with financing. Am I correct? Absolutely. Okay, yeah. And so elaborate a little bit more on, you know, your company itself, Florida Funders. Yeah, Florida Funders is a statewide online investment platform. And we find early stage companies, startup companies throughout the state that are looking for funding. We do a significant vetting process where we will put them through the ringer, the, the, the shark tank type ringer, and and see if it's a worthwhile investment, if our investors are interested in investing. If they get through the, the due diligence process, then we list them on our website. Everything's done online. So we list them on our website for funding. The, that allows our registered users. We have well over 200 accredited investors now that are members of Florida Funders. Those investors can then view the deal that's on the website. If they're interested, they can transfer money into escrow. So when they transfer in money to escrow, they can transfer as, as little as $3,000. So far, our investors have invested as little as three and up to $50,000 at a time. We accumulate all that into one investment vehicle, a special purpose investment vehicle. By that, we have one entity that actually invests in the company. So we, we, don't, we might accumulate five or 10 or 20 investors, but they become one entity through an SPV, which is an LLC. And that SPV becomes the investor in the company. Very cool. Now, you noted, uh, you know, you found this company in 2014 because you felt that, you know, we're losing too many entrepreneurs to places like Silicon Valley and Austin. You know, what's key to keeping the entrepreneurs in Tampa? You know, just one of my uh, theories is we don't have enough uh, investment in entrepreneurs in here, not enough angel investors out there. I mean, what, what is your uh, belief? That is, is somewhat true. There, there's a lot going on that a lot of people don't know about, but the... The angel investors who are investing, who are investing, are typically required to invest. The company requires twenty-five or fifty thousand dollars minimum investment, 
So you'll see angels doing that in kind of under the radar, 25 or 50,000 here or there. So what we're trying to do is bring in those investors that don't want to put 25 or 50,000. Rather than putting 50,000 in one entity, they could put 5,000 in 10 entities and spread out their risk. So by spreading out their risk, they can have 10 different investments. One of those, at some point, it, chances are one of those 10 is going to be a, a huge success. So they can spread their risk rather than putting that 50000 in in one entity. So right now, if we go on your website, we are going to see who we can invest into? The, uh, the SEC says we can only do this for accredited investors. So basically, an accredited investor is somebody who's worth a million dollars or more, not counting the value of their primary residence, or they make $200,000 a year for the past two years, or 300000 husband and wife. So accredited investors only are allowed. Now the Jobs Act, which was passed in 2013, basically allows non-accredited investors to invest in the type of what we're doing, which is called crowdfunding. Unfortunately, the SEC has not made the detailed rules that allow crowdfunding to make it legal. So essentially crowdfunding is not legal, which is what we're doing for the general public. Wow, that's I didn't even know that. Yeah, because uh, crowdfunding has been you know all the you know within the entrepreneur entrepreneurial community, crowdfunding. I hear that term all the time thrown around there. So sure. Now, crowdfunding, donation based crowdfunding is totally legal, and that's where the investor or the the person coming up with the funds does not have an equity stake in the company. I see the difference. Okay. So gotcha. equity crowdfunding is what's not legal. Gotcha. But definitely crowdfunding for general purposes. If somebody has a product and they want to do a crowdfunding program, it's a fantastic way to get your product out there. Yeah. If, but you can't charge people that people can't give you money to invest in your company only yeah. buy your product. Well, I got to wrap up uh, the uh, interview here. But again, David Chittister, CEO of Florida Funders. You can learn more about him at floridafunders.com. And again, the uh, Uber pitch going on this afternoon from 11 to 2. Just uh, use the uh, Uber app uh, on your uh, smartphone. Enter the uh, promotion code TBPITCH. And if you're lucky enough, you may get to ride in a car for 15 minutes with an investor to give your uh, give your business pitch to them. So make sure your pitch is on point if you happen to get picked up by Uber and you get 15 minutes with the investor. And then they bring you back uh, to where you uh, were picked up. At so you don't actually get a rod to anywhere so it's not uh, two things going on here you only get the pitch so don't don't also use it as a taxi service right then and there uh, David thank you very much uh, for being in studio thank you. today my pleasure coming back from the break I'm going to be talk with uh, child psychologist uh, Dr Steve O'Brien on that business show with Jamie Maloney where business becomes show business have you considered a reverse mortgage as part of your retirement financial plan for homeowners age 62 or older a reverse mortgage from Access Reverse Mortgage is a safe economical way to turn your home's equity into cash or monthly income. Access Reverse Mortgage is a family-owned company based right here in the Tampa Bay area for the past 10 years. They are A-plus rated by the Better Business Bureau and Florida's leading reverse mortgage provider. Call 727-347-0305 or go to accessreverse.com to start your research today. NMLS number 4566. That's 727 347 Zero three zero five. Are you looking for a local real estate firm that knows the market and has your interests in mind? Then contact Jim McPeak at McPeak Real Estate Firm, a family-owned business whose agents have over 60-plus years of experience in the Tampa Bay market. Many of the agents are military veterans that know the VA process for buying a home and are proud to help our military members in any way they can. From residential to commercial real estate, McPeak Real Estate Firm is here to help. Contact Jim at 813-495-3875 and learn more at mcpeakteam.com. Help promote the entrepreneurial spirit that drives the American economy. Tune in weekdays at 8 a.m. on 1250 Wins WHNZ to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where he promotes what is right with our community and highlights the successes of our entrepreneurs. Show contributor openings also available. You can learn more about the show and how to become part of this growing network at tampabayradio.com. Tune in weekdays at 8 a.m. to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Tampa Bay weather is a roof killer. That's why when getting your roof done, you want it done right. Hi, I'm Jamie Maloney of That Business Show. When considering a new roof or repair, talk to Westfall Roofing. They've been installing high-quality roofs in Tampa Bay for over 25 years. Get a free, no-obligation estimate by calling 855-99-ROOFING. That's 855-99-ROOFING. Find out what already 15,000 satisfied customers already know. Call now, 855-99-ROOFING. 
855-99-ROOFING. Are you in need of new flooring or ready to tackle that home remodeling project? Then contact Jaeger & Company Incorporated, a family-owned, state-certified general contracting business with over 70 years of experience and the recipient of the Angie's List Super Service Award for the last eight years in multiple categories. Jaeger & Company comes to you with their Shop at Home Flooring Sales Service and their hardwood flooring refinishing is the very best in the Bay. Kitchen and bath design featuring American-made well-born cabinets and all work is done by employees, not subcontractors. Learn more at JaegerFlooring.com. From the Bright House Networks Traffic Center. It's been a tough ride on North on I-75 this morning in the Brandon area. Another crash out there just north of State Road 60 in the left-hand lane. That is stacking things up from before the Crosstown Expressway. Speaking of the Crosstown, it's slow from downtown Tampa out through the Hyde Park area and South Tampa area due to an earlier disabled truck in the right-hand lane. It is now gone, so traffic should be getting back to normal through that area. See traffic problems call the injury firm of Abraham's son and Uteric Hillsborough traffic tip line, 866-545-9595. This report is brought to you by the National Safety Council and the University of Iowa. Did you know your car talks to you? Are you listening? All those beeps, vibrations, and lit-up icons are your car's way of communicating. To help you be a safer driver, learn more at mycardoeswhat.org. Today, more humid with a 30% chance of showers, high 88. Tonight, partly cloudy, low 74. Tomorrow, a 30% rain chance, high 85. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney on 1250 Winds WHNZ. Missed a show? Then head over to tampabayradio.com where all shows are available on demand. Once again, here's your host, Jamie Maloney. And we're back to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney where business becomes show business. Again, you'll find this show on here weekday mornings at 8 a.m. if you're finding me on the air for the first time. It's a business variety show. A little something different. Nothing out there like it on the Tampa Bay Airwaves as I talk to many different professionals each and every morning about what they are doing in our community community to make a difference the show is always looking for guests and always looking for partners too so if you've been listening for me uh to me for a while and you're thinking man i need to get in there maybe do a segment with uh with jamie feel free to contact me best way to get me is through my contact form at tampabayradio.com right across the uh, menu bar it says contact click on that and we'll see about getting you in here uh, and uh, letting you do uh, your pitch to the uh, community and hearing about what uh, your product or your service or even if it's just an organization or a great story to tell I'd love to hear from you. As always, uh, please connect with me on all the different social media sites, facebook.com forward slash that business show, and also Twitter under the uh, name Jamie underscore Maloney. Time to bring on my next guest for the show. Dr. Steve O'Brien is a child psychologist and creator of the Life at Home app. This app aims to modernize more traditional evaluation and therapeutic tools with a nod to the digital age. Dr. Steve O'Brien, welcome to the program. Good morning. Good morning. So first off, tell me a little bit about your background. You're a child psychologist. Yes, uh, yes. How long you've been practicing? Tell me a little bit about your business. Well, I started in 1994 in Clearwater, and I remain in that area. And uh, over time, just little by little, got busier as I was doing contract work all over the place and working for various hospitals and organizations and teaching at uh, St. Pete College. And so over the years, busier and busier. And and now I'm very fortunate to say that the practice is quite busy. So I see primarily children, uh, adolescents, uh, and I do a lot of parent consultation because I find today that parenting is really hard. And being a child is really hard. And I try to provide assistance with both of those kinds of things. So in real estate, we do refer uh, a lot of our clients to subcontractors and other parties. And mm-hmm. I'm so glad to know you because <laughs> I have clients to refer to you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, You know, I mean, I, I think everybody has a story to tell when it comes to being a parent or being a kid. Really, right. yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, it's it's tough. I think it's really tough today. There's so much impacting children today. And I mean, you to talk to you actually. <laughs> As a yeah, child. part, yeah, part of being so. a real estate professional is we also are psychiatrists and uh-huh. psychologists uh-huh. too. Yeah. We get involved in all the uh, all the uh, you know crazy drama that goes on in people's <laughs> lives too, uh, unknowingly a lot of times. <laughs> now you're the creator of the uh, Life at Home app. What That's is right. this? Yes, and it just went uh, live yesterday actually. So Life at Home is a, a a new tool. It's really designed for child professionals. So if you are a child psychologist or a social worker, a marriage and family therapist, uh, a guidance counselor, a special education teacher, an attorney that works with families, any of those professions, child advocacy workers, are all professions where you usually need at some point to understand what does this kid think about his family. So this is a tech-friendly way to get a kid to open up about what they think and feel about their family situation. Think a family drawing but on a tablet. So, do you, do you, I'm, I'm sorry, did you say you also work with divorce attorneys? Yes. Because I, I would see. Uh, yes, that's correct. Yes, this could be really there. something that when you really just need to understand what a kid's thinking, but you don't want to just sit down and necessarily just ask a five-year-old, 
hey, how's things at home? Because that's a very intimidating question. And children also have, you know, limited abilities, both, you know, to, for emotional control, for, for their verbal output. It's tough for them to really sit down and talk to somebody, maybe somebody they don't even know very well, and open up about family. So this makes it much less intimidating because they're really just looking at a tablet, going through a series of steps where they're picking little figures. They kind of look like chalk drawings. And they go through and they pick thoughts and feelings for these characters. They can voice record and make them say things, or they can type or have the professional type for them. Uh, they actually also place them in a house. They say what they're doing. Uh, they, they also can pick pets mm -hmm. and they also can pick the weather because, you know, the weather can have like emotional connotations mm -hmm. and they can also pick background music out of a, of a selection of six mm -hmm. uh, different choices. And so everything stores and everything's protected with a code for the professional. And so then that information can be shared with parents, with caretakers, with other professionals so that the people in that child's life have a better handle on what this kid thinks and feels about family. So is the app uh, educational more than entertaining? Or is it yeah, right. to, it's, but it's, it does. It has an entertaining component, too. I mean, too. I think it has a game-like quality, which is great. Uh, but it really is a tool. It really is something so that a professional can say, hey, I'm kind of like at a loss about how to understand this kid because he doesn't want to talk that much or he doesn't like to draw or... Uh, and, and so I'm, I'm not sure what to do. Well, this is an option. And certainly it isn't a substitute for other methods, but it can be a supplement. So it's for the child to express themselves in a different Correct. way. Correct. And they usually and they sit down with the professional. And it usually only takes anywhere from, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes to, to do this, it, depending on how many family members the child depend, you know, wants to place. Mm -hmm. And, and it's fun and it's, it's kind of a game for them. Exactly. And it's really, it's, it, and it's targeted for professionals. I mean, I mean, parents could purchase it, but it's really designed more for professionals to buy and then they can share that interpret, information. Interpret, mm -hmm, exactly. Yeah. But you were saying uh, when we we're talking earlier, though, that a parent can <coughs> use it just with their kid. And there may not need to be, uh, you know, necessarily like a psychologist involved. It could yeah. just be an app. They, they could. They could. Uh, there's a part of me that likes the idea of a professional being involved because I think that sometimes you want to be careful about how you interpret things, even though you don't have to have mental health training to interpret this right. the, this app it does help but one of my other motivations was to design something that isn't too complex because a lot of the tools that we have as psychologists you can't get you know if you're in another profession because you have to meet certain criteria but i wanted to design something that, was that people and other professionals again like guidance counselors perhaps people that work for the department of children and families uh, or the school board the, the education department could have something that they could use that you don't have to have a doctoral degree to use it because I think that a lot of people are working with kids and in very difficult situations, you know, going into homes and talking to kids. And, and I admire the work that they do, but they do have limited resources, limited education and training, and they're working sometimes in very intense situations. And so I, if, if I could provide one thing that helps a little bit for them to connect with this kid a little better, then I feel like I've done something. What is the uh, age range that this, uh, the app is designed for? It's ideal, I think, for ages 5 to 12, but very... Uh, tech-savvy four-year-olds that are very bright could certainly use it with little assistance. And teens could use it too. Some teens may be a little too mature for it, but I think you know some teens are a little more immature still. Right? They, they vary in terms of their developmental maturity. And so some of them could use it. But I'd say 5 to 12 is probably the ideal range. And what was your motivation in creating this app? Were you just noticing that uh, you know children and parents just had different communication methods and this ties it together? I, I, you know, the, the, the generation gap seems bigger because of technology. You know, technology is another language and it's another culture. And, the, and I think that sometimes we forget that. Uh, you know, adults can forget that children today are really growing up with another language. And that language is sometimes not well understood uh, by, by adults, and they're always just trying to sometimes pull kids off of technology. Now, I, I have concerns. I think kids do need to have limits with their technology, absolutely, because we want the brain to develop <laughs> evenly. But what I noticed over time in my office was that children were playing less traditionally and they were drawing less now again i have some concerns about that and i think children still need to do that it's very important but at the same point they also need to have a, a, a way to express themselves in that tech language and that's what this provides mm -hmm. wow. some great information i got to take a quick break but coming back from the break i'm going to talk a little bit more with uh, dr steve o'brien child psychologist and creator of the <coughs> life at home app i want to talk to him a little bit about uh, the adhd and the when the proper time to introduce uh, your child to technology because uh, per his uh you know guidance there were uh, getting children a little bit too involved in technology a little bit too early so i want to get his input on that on the uh, next segment of the uh, show 
show. Uh, you're currently listening to that business show, and also stay tuned uh, after uh, that segment. We're going to be talking with uh, Tara Noss Wilga and Kristen Seely about the Wine, Women, and Shoes event uh, that's coming up November 20th uh, on a Friday at the Renaissance Tampa International Plaza Hotel, an event designed to help the Children's Cancer Center. You're listening to that business show with Jamie Maloney. In the meantime, be sure to visit my website, tampabayradio.com, and we'll be back in a moment. Hi, welcome to Yeagers. We just want to take a minute and show you what we're all about. Uh, at Yeagers, our primary business is hardwood flooring, although we are remodelers for kitchen, bath, and general construction. We operate a fleet of shop-at-home vans that have all the flooring-type products, hardwood flooring, laminate flooring, tiles, stone, what have you. So we're able to come out first with products in our vehicles and take a look at the setting, how the colors will work, and then to be able to come up with some options and ideas for you. If that's not good enough, we have a large distribution center that we inventory product and have a nice display area. Realtors nationwide. I have an extensive network of contacts and have developed a comprehensive marketing plan to get your home sold quickly. Learn more at tampabayradio.com and contact me today to get your home sold. From the Bright House Networks Traffic Center. Northbound I-75, it's slow in the Brandon area from just past 301 to just past State Road 60. Crash there in the left-hand lane. Westbound I-4, slow from the Summit Connector to 275. Selman Crosstown, it was a bit slow out of downtown Tampa. That looks a whole lot better now. Southbound Veterans Expressway, a bit slow between Lineball and Waters. Sea traffic problems called the injury firm of Abraham, Son, and Uterick. Hillsborough Traffic Tip Line, 866-545-9595. This report is brought to you by the National Safety Council and the University of Iowa. Did you know your car talks to you? Are you listening? All those beeps, vibrations, and lit up icons are your car's way of communicating. To help you be a safer driver, learn more at mycardoeswhat.org. 1250 Winds Weather Center forecast. Upper 80s today for the high, 30% chance of some scattered afternoon showers. That's when we'll see a bit of cloud cover develop as well. Tonight's lows in the mid-70s through the weekend. Mid-80s tomorrow, 30% chance of rain. Rain clears out Sunday morning. Beautiful day coming up. Low 80s, mix of sun and clouds. Impact Radio 1250 Winds. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney on 1250 Wins WHNZ. Missed a show? Then head over to tampabayradio.com where all shows are available on demand. Once again, here's your host, Jamie Maloney. And welcome back to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney where business becomes show business. Again, weekday mornings, 8 a.m. here on 1250 WHNZ. And as always, please learn more about the show over at tampabayradio.com. Currently talking to uh, Dr. Steve O'Brien. He's a child psychologist and creator of the Life at Home app. And you can learn more about him and this app at uh, psychtouch.com. So, uh, uh, Steve, uh, let's mm-hmm. talk a little bit about ADHD. Uh, mm-hmm. To me, that seems like it's overdiagnosed these days. What is your input on this? You know, a lot of people think that it is overdiagnosed. I think it's probably more accurate, Jamie, to say that it's misdiagnosed. So, there are many children with ADHD who are correctly identified as such. But there are many who are diagnosed with ADHD that probably have something else going on, like an anxiety disorder, depression. Uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. They may have some level of autism. Uh, There could be a lot of other things that could be going on. But I do 
caution people about saying it's just overdiagnosed and then, well, then the kid's just normal or the kid's just being a brat. You know, that's not often the case. So there often is still something going on. Sometimes it just takes a third party professional to figure out what it is. Now, what is going on today versus 20 years ago that is causing the shift in child behavior? It's a really good question. We're still doing research on that to figure that out, Jamie. But what I would say is technology probably has something to do with it because technology actually does affect a developing brain. And so I think that if children are exposed to a high degree of technological stimulation early and not other types like physical play, then that is probably kind of training the brain to be a little more uh, vigilant, but also to be more reactive, uh, less persistent. Uh, you know, a lot of times we see kids and even adults that want immediate reactions from things. They can't delay gratification. They can't persist for very long. They want, you know, we, we, we don't have much patience, right? We want this computer's got to be fast and I don't want to be put on hold for more than 10 seconds. That was me yesterday. <laughs> yeah, right. Mm -hmm. But and imagine if that's us. Imagine kids have even less of that because one, they're less patient to begin with. And two, they're being raised with this kind of immediate mm. feedback almost all the time. And I think that that is affecting their ability to attend to stimuli for long periods. Yeah. What age then should a parent introduce technology to their child? When is it too uh, early mm -hmm. to introduce technology? You, you know, while there's no magic number, I often say to my grad students, eight is enough. Because by age eight, the brain has gone through a fair amount of development and they have more of an understanding of what what does need to happen in life in terms of, hey, you, you do have consequences and you do have some level of reasoning starting to happen at eight. But before then, there's, there's a lot of reactivity and impulsivity. And if all that is just put into technology, they're not learning enough about self-control. And so it's kind of safe bet to do more sophisticated technology at eight and up. And whenever you're in doubt, later is better. Now, you say age eight, but aren't our schools introducing technology? I mean, right in a kindergarten, first, second grade? Yes, and they, and they are. And I'm certainly not saying none, but I think that a lot of the, for example, lots of gaming and um, lots of communicating via, you know, via text and all that sort of stuff, that's better later. Now, for some educational purposes here and there for part of their day before eight, I think that's appropriate. How does your app, again, the Life at Home app, assist uh, parents of autistic children, for instance? That's a, that's a really good question. I'm actually really excited about how the autistic children on my caseload are responding to the app because they have difficulty traditionally with expressing themselves. Social communication is a challenge, particularly about thoughts and feelings. So this kind of concrete Democratizes it and makes it more um, less intimidating, and and because of the images, they can kind of tap things more, and it's easier for them to express things about thoughts and feelings, and so they they really feel like they're they're playing a game, and I think this is the kind of game that's healthy because you are learning about them and they are expressing themselves. So uh, so children with autism, I think, really benefit from some type of technology when it's encouraging communication as opposed to just, they're just, you know, shooting up things and driving cars. Right. It's, and so you had some some results. Um, you actually had autistic children. Yes. I have a, a, a lot the, of the mild results. to moderate uh, children with autism on my caseload. And, 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 and social communication is a struggle for them. And it's something they need a lot of practice with. Just like, you know, some people are just not good at math and they need extra practice. Well, uh, children with autism are not good at social, emotional communication and understanding. So they need to practice it. Right. Is autism on the rise in our society or is it kind of stable across the generation? <coughs> What's going on in that? Another good question that we're still finding out about. But what I would say is that it's on the rise because we're recognizing it more. And we're recognizing the spectrum of it more. You know, it used to be traditionally that we would only diagnose more severe symptoms as autism. But now we see, the, we understand and recognize the more mild cases. Uh, and these are children that sometimes we just thought were, you know, kind of just outcast and, you know, excessively nerdy and that sort of thing. But some of them really do have issues with social emotional understanding and communication is it a, just a chemical uh imbalance? it's a neurological it's a neurological, neurological issue it's a neurological issue and although we can't say technology causes it that would be too strong a statement you know because it really is more of a genetic and neurological disorder but my suspicion is that a ton of technology early on doesn't help like in other words i think if a kid has a tendency for autism genetically being overly exposed to technology and underexposed to direct human communication is not a good thing. It will probably promote it. 
Wow. Mm-hmm. Well, I've got to take a, a quick break here and wrap up uh, the interview here. Uh, Dr. Uh, Steve O'Brien, child psychologist. Great discussion today. Thank you very much for being in Thank the studio. Thank you. Oh, today. and let me say real quick, sure. shout out to uh, Sharon, the Dr. Whisperer. Thank you so much for <laughs> hooking me up with these guys today. Yes, thank Sharon you, Sharon. Sharon's awesome. Yes, he Sharon Feckety, a great supporter of the show, sends me over many amazing guests, including Dr. Uh, Steve O'Brien, creator of the Life at Home app, and you can learn more about this app at psychtouch.com. Dr. Steve O'Brien, again, thank you very much. Thank you both. Got to take a, a quick break, but uh, coming back from the break, we're going to be talking with Tara Noswilga and Kristen Seeley about the Wine, Women, and Shoes event, again, coming up on November 20th, uh, Friday at the Renaissance Tampa International Plaza Hotel, designed to help the Children's Cancer Center. So stay tuned. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Mooney, where business becomes show business. Have you considered a reverse mortgage as part of your retirement financial plan? For homeowners age 62 or older, a reverse mortgage from Access Reverse Mortgage is a safe economical way to turn your home's equity into cash or monthly income. Access Reverse Mortgage is a family-owned company based right here in the Tampa Bay area for the past 10 years. They are A-plus rated by the Better Business Bureau and Florida's leading reverse mortgage provider. Call 727-347-0305 or go to accessreverse.com to start your research today. NMLS number 4566. That's 727 347 0305. Are you looking for a local real estate firm that knows the market and has your interests in mind? Then contact Jim McPeak at McPeak Real Estate Firm, a family-owned business whose agents have over 60-plus years of experience in the Tampa Bay market. Many of the agents are military veterans that know the VA process for buying a home and are proud to help our military members in any way they can. From residential to commercial real estate, McPeak Real Estate Firm is here to help. Contact Jim at 813-495-3875 and learn more at mcpeakteam.com. Help promote the entrepreneurial spirit that drives the American economy. Tune in weekdays at 8 a.m. on 1250 Wins WHNZ to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where he promotes what is right with our community and highlights the successes of our entrepreneurs. Show contributor openings also available. You can learn more about the show and how to become part of this growing network at tampabayradio.com. Tune in weekdays at 8 a.m. to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Tampa Bay weather is a roof killer. That's why when getting your roof done, you want it done right. Hi, I'm Jamie Maloney of That Business Show. When considering a new roof or repair, talk to Westfall Roofing. They've been installing high-quality roofs in Tampa Bay for over 25 years. Get a free, no-obligation estimate by calling 855-99-ROOFING. That's 855-99-ROOFING. Find out what already 15,000 satisfied customers already know. Call now, 855-99-ROOFING. Are you in need of new flooring or ready to tackle that home remodeling project? Then contact Jaeger & Company Incorporated, a family-owned, state-certified general contracting business with over 70 years of experience and the recipient of the Angie's List Super Service Award for the last eight years in multiple categories. Jaeger & Company comes to you with their shop-at-home flooring sales service and their hardwood flooring refinishing is the very best in the Bay. Kitchen and bath design featuring American-made, well-born cabinets and all work is done by employees, not subcontractors. Learn more at JaegerFlooring.com. From the Bright House Networks Traffic Center. Northbound I-75, it's slow in the Brandon area from just past 301 to just past State Road 60. Crash there in the left-hand lane. Westbound I-4, slow from the Summit Connector to 275. Selman Crosstown, it was a bit slow out of downtown Tampa. That looks a whole lot better now. Southbound Veterans Expressway, a bit slow between Limeball and Waters. See traffic problems? Call the injury firm of Abraham, Son, and Uterich. Hillsborough Traffic Tip Line, 866-545-9595. This report is brought to you by the Extrogen Temporal Scanner Thermometer. When buying a thermometer, trust over 50 published studies supporting the accuracy of the Extrogen Temporal Scanner. Your family deserves the best. The Extrogen Temporal Scanner Thermometer, available at Walmart. Today, more humid with a 30% chance of showers, high 88. Tonight, partly cloudy, low 74. Tomorrow, a 30% rain chance, high 85. You're listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney on 1250 Winds WHNZ. Missed a show? Then head over to tampabayradio.com, where all shows are available on demand. 
Once again, here's your host, Jamie Maloney. And we're back to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Again, weekday mornings here at 8 a.m., a business variety show, a little something different each and every morning as I talk to many different professionals about what they are doing in the Tampa Bay community to make a difference. Also, as I've been announcing over the last couple of weeks, the show is expanding to uh, include a real estate edition of the show. That show is going to begin airing this Sunday at 5 a.m. on 970 WFLA. And it's going to be uh, called That Business Show, The Real Estate Edition, because that's what I do every day. I sell real estate. So it's going to be a real estate-centric show. Very excited to be uh, doing that show. Is there, is there going to be replay um Oh yeah, During yeah. The no, week I don't expect that. Five a.m. No, I expect you to get up at four thirty in the morning and listen to me. Uh. I, <laughs> that was the plan, but if you have other times, like nah, of course it's going to be on demand. I will have a uh, iTunes uh, feed set okay. up for that. Uh, I know a lot of people out there listen to podcasts uh, these days, but it'll also be available on demand over at TampaBayRadio.com. So I make all the shows available, uh, both uh, this show and that show, and so it's going to be a great resource about the uh, real estate community and a lot of great information about uh, you know mortgages. Uh, brought on uh, Frank Cotto with uh, Lincoln Lending Group. He's going to be my uh, uh, regular co-host on that show. So it's just going to be a very informative show about what's going on in the real estate market. We'll be talking a lot about foreclosures because uh, that's what I specialize in. So you're going to be a lot of different stuff out there, a lot of great stories. People probably heard, heard me share some of them on the, this show from time to time. But again, that show is going to begin airing uh, this uh, Sunday, and it'll be every Sunday. So if you don't uh, catch the show uh, live on the air, just uh, pick it up on iTunes or over on TampaBayRadio.com. Time to bring in my next guests for the show. Tara Noswilga has been a volunteer ambassador for the Children's Cancer Center for the past five years and is proud to be one of the chairs for Wine, Women, and Shoes, an event being held Friday, November 20th at the <coughs> Renaissance Tampa International Plaza Hotel to benefit the Children's Cancer Center. She is joined in studio by Kristen Seeley, marketing coordinator for the Children's Cancer Center. Ladies, welcome to the program today. Thank you for having us. So, Kristen, I will start with you. Talk to us a little bit about the mission and what Children's Cancer Center is about. Sure. Uh, the Children's Cancer Center, we serve over 950 uh, children and families. Come a little closer in there, if you would. Just, there. just uh, bring it closer to yeah. you. Or, yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Go, the Children's Cancer yeah, Center. The go Children's ahead. Cancer Center has been serving uh, over 950 families in the Tampa Bay area for 41 years. Yeah, lean, you're going to have to lean into the microphone there. Yeah, pull the mic into Yeah, Yeah, we're having problems picking up the uh, audio there. Yeah, just lean into it like see, I'm on top of the microphone there. Yeah, yeah lean into it. Okay, there you go. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Live she's radio, like, yeah. She's like totally spread onto the table. <laughs> <laughs> or actually, you know what you can do? You can swing that other microphone over to you. Just swing that one to you right there. There you go. Is that better? Yeah, that one's better. Right both? There. No, no, you're <laughs> fine. She has a, she has a soft-spoken voice really there. <laughs> no problem. Hey, don't worry about it. I you, Stuff happens on live radio. It makes it entertaining. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> makes for a good story to share for your friends and yeah, family and stuff. Exactly. Saying, I was on the radio and they couldn't hear me. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll start again. Talk to us about the mission of the uh, Children's Cancer Center. Okay. Uh, the mission is the Children's Cancer Center has been serving uh, over 950 families families in the Tampa Bay area for 41 years. Uh, we offer 24 programs um, that help families from diagnosis to uh, survivorship and sadly to often bereavement. Uh, we also help children uh, battling cancer or chronic blood disorders and their families with uh, educational, emotional, and financial support. What's the history of the uh, Cancer Center in the area? How long has it been around? 41 years. 41 yeah. years. Wow. It's a you know, great uh, you know, organization here in the Tampa area. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Sam. Yes, I've been a volunteer um, actually maybe I started uh, eight years ago. And um, I was there with the kids, um, and it's a, it's it's an amazing charity. It's a great program. It, it makes a different a difference in the community. It's different to all of the charities that I've heard about uh, with uh, regarding um, uh, children and cancer. Right. They really provide a moral support. So as a mm -hmm. as a volunteer, you go, you play with the kids. The parents are upstairs. They talk to each other. They support each other. And they are very genuine about what they're doing uh, for the families. Yeah, one of the things about children's cancer, because I've had uh, children cancer specialists in before, is just the lack of research and the lack of funding that's available, uh, you know, on the market for these children. So um, you know, I had um, uh, Kyle Matthews, because of Ezra, who uh, lost his child to a neuroblastoma cancer. He's, uh, you know, a great uh, philanthropist and uh, just did a karaoke for the cure. But that's one of the things we get into in that discussion is that there's just not a lot of funding out there for the research 
research uh, of childhood cancer because it's just not profitable to the uh, to the uh, drug makers out there. And when his ch- child was, uh, you know, afflicted with the uh, disease, they pretty much told him to pick a trial and mm-hmm. you just kind of pick, you know, something at random there based on whatever inputs they have. And so the Children's Cancer Center then is set up to assist and as a kind of a support group, am I uh, safe to say? Exactly, in the immediate needs. So we're not research-based, but we help um, families, you know, educationally, emotionally, and, um, and financially. financially mm-hmm. yep. Okay. Now, the uh, Wine, Women, and Shoes event, that's coming up on November 20th. Let's talk a little about this. this uh, how long has this event been going on? This is going to be our third annual Wine, Women, and Shoes Tampa, um, and we're really excited to present it again. It's an amazing event. Um this is an event that happens all over the country, and uh, we are we are super excited. It's um, unique. It's definitely a party. It's an evening event. You can plan it a lady like a ladies' night out mm-hmm. type of event. But um, as I always love to say, party for a purpose. So right. um, we raise a lot of money and have a lot of fun doing it. So uh, wine, women, and shoes. Just to let you know, since it is more female. Uh, uh, yeah, are males allowed to come to this thing? Or You're no? absolutely allowed to come just because <laughs> we gear it towards women. I actually have, um, you know, male friends that attend um, who I don't put to work, and uh, they have a really good time as well. Um, so we have a unique combination of a, a marketplace, like so shopping, wine tasting, and then we go into a, a program with entertainment and a full fashion show, live auction, and um, we have a unique style of raffle key to the closet so a chance to win almost fifteen thousand dollars worth of stuff in a dream closet it's a great party yeah. to go with your girlfriends it's just at the moment you arrive it's really mm-hmm. geared towards mm-hmm. us having a good time absolutely and us fashionistas too so uh, people love to get dressed up and and you know, so for the guys that go do they got to have a tuxedo on <laughs> i put one of those on a few weeks ago at the banyan ball right. uh, nice. first time i'd had on <laughs> I don't want a tuxedo in like 20 years, so I got I got to wear a tuxedo over there. If you want to wear your tuxedo again, you're more have than one. welcome. Yeah, yeah, I gotta, you I don't have rent. to. No, no. I got to go rent It is a classy formal. event, so you do you know you do dress up, but you dress to impress, and mm-hmm. it's about fashion, so you can be very creative. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And so, then uh, wear ahead. beautiful shoes because there's actually a contest. <laughs> and a contest for the men too. Not we are having a contest for the men this year, um, which segues nicely into a, another component of this, which is our soul men. But not to be outdone, Stella's right. We do have a best in shoe contest every year for the ladies. And so that's really a fun way to recognize. But it's not a best in shoe for the men category, though. No. Because all our shoes look the same anyway. They're kind exactly. of boring in the men's category. And so. That's true. It has to be for the women. And actually, the uh, people that are selecting the best shoes are our the soul men. men. Mm-hmm. The time that it happened, the first show that we had, I uh, was select. I was one of the women selected. And so you get to go on stage. And unfortunately, when they called us, I had just... I uh, had done a trip to the bathroom, so I missed my <laughs> <laughs> I missed my sh- sh- shine on How that. How many uh, shoes do you have in your closet, Stella? I know you women out there have a whole closet <gasps> for those things, and us men have you know a shoe for we have our flip flops, we have our tennis shoe, and we have our dress shoe. We're in a brown <laughs> color and a black color. And that, that that that's my closet right there. I can't even come up with a number right now. I, I'd say, Would you know, Tara? What I, about only you? because my husband like asked me recently about three hundred pairs. <gasps> three hundred pairs. Yeah. Or do you have less than that? Three hundred pairs. Why yeah. gosh. Do you even wear all 300 pairs? I Sometimes. Mean, wow. Yeah. yeah they all, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you have 360 days in the year. So there you go. I've yeah. been hearing a lot about red bottom shoes. Uh, yeah. One of my uh, girlfriends is. Louis Vuitton. Oui. Did is I say this, that right? Oui. What is this red bottom <laughs> shoe craze? What is this? Yes. Yeah, so there's a few brands um, that do something unique just to stand out, and uh, they do have a red sole to their shoe. Um, Louis Vuitton is probably one of the most famous. So, but that's one of the cool things about Wine, Women, and Shoes is you can see some brands you don't normally see every day, um, some really high-end designers and some unique creative designs, too. Like we love to say, you know, change your shoes, change your life, too. So um, you can purchase shoes at our event. That's part of it. And um, all, all that money will be going to Children's Cancer Center. 
So Tara, do you have any needs right now that you'd like to ask our listeners? So maybe do we need more um, uh, soul men to come and serve <laughs> us? Or do we need sponsors? Um, do you have a call out for that? Both. Actually, both. Um, we are still looking for some sponsors. We already have some of uh, <coughs> our, our high-level sponsors. London Plastic Surgery. London Plastic Surgery. I cannot plug them enough. They're such a phenomenal community partner. Um, and they do so much for our event as well, physically, not just monetarily. Um, they're great. So Land and Plastic Surgery, thank you. Big shout out to them. Um, we have a couple of other sponsorship needs, including um, a Key to the Closet sponsor. We're looking to fill that so that we can go ahead and start plugging that on social media. Um, and there's a few others, too. You can go to Wine, Women and Shoes, or excuse me, www.stampa.com or the Children's Cancer Center um, website and see our sponsorship packet there along with, um, our soul men. So the situation with our soul men this year is we're, um, asking them to help us raise funds. So if you can't attend our event this year, you can also go and support through CrowdRise by making donations to your favorite soul man. So oh, cool. they'll have photos and bios up. I'm really excited. About now, that. how much money has the event raised in past years? Uh, roughly? On average, about $80,000 go directly to the children and, and family we serve. Um, so that's really exciting. It's an expensive event to put on <coughs> because we want to make it a luxurious, you know, wow event. Um, but we are so proud that we can give that much back. And this year, we're really shooting for more. We're really trying to make the event amazing, but still raise as much as possible. And we're doing that through Soul Men and sponsorships. What's we're, the uh, goal for uh, this year? Do you have a number out there that you're trying to reach? Now I'm being held to this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we really want to shoot for 100K this year. That would go. I had a feeling you're going to say 100K. Yeah. You're, you're averaging 80. You want to push a little bit. 101.3. No. <laughs> um, we really you know, want to give as much as we can back so that we can continue to bring this event to Tampa. Um, I, I don't know if Kristen's going to kill me for saying this on the radio, but Tampa, we have such a unique community here that loves to give back um, and also loves to have a good time. So we we are also looking for wine donations as well to help compensate um, <laughs> all of the wine we consume. Tampa Bay has the number one wine consumption of any wine, women, and shoes across the country. Oh, so, wow. We've got a bunch of lushes around here. <laughs> yeah. <Wow. laughs> we need some wine donations along with that. So, Is there a cost to attend uh, just uh, the general public? Or how does that work? <laughs> yes, we have general admission tickets available at one twenty-five, dollars um, and a lot is included with that. If you go to our website, again, www.stampa.com, you can find out all of the stuff um, that comes with your ticket. We have VIP tickets starting at one seventy-five. dollars as well and we are sold out and you of can buy, our oh, okay. uh, larger lounges already which is oh, super exciting so how okay. many attendees uh, are you expecting is About this gonna 550 be 500 so this mm -hmm. is going to be a pretty good uh networking mm -hmm. event on top of a great Absolutely. fundraiser for the uh, children's cancer centers or people out there that are listening i uh, need to uh check out the uh, website winewomenshoes.com or wws what was that wwstampa.com <laughs> and you can Tampa. also com. always go to childrenscancercenter.org to learn more about the mission and all of our events and you've been involved with the uh, the um, uh, Children's Cancer Center for the past five years, correct? Yeah, almost, oh yeah, almost six now. <laughs> six now, um, mm -hmm. and you were serving a volunteer capacity. Or? I am a volunteer ambassador. Yeah, so, so I, how did you get involved with the uh, the organization? Originally through the company I used to work for, Banana Republic, we developed developed a wonderful relationship with them because we really wanted to be more involved in our community, and um, through that, I kind of. I don't know now. I'm kind of part of the family there. I'm a fixture, right. so I serve on many of the committees for the events. There. So I take it you worked at Banana Republic. You got 300 shoes. Fashion is a <laughs> is a big uh, big part of your uh, life, then, correct? Absolutely. But so is philanthropy. So it's a fun way to kind of mix all my passions. Are you involved uh, in uh, fashion or uh, clothing uh, in your uh, day job now, or no? <laughs> Actually, no. I'm doing marketing and PR for a company called Access Group, but I get to um, you know use my creativity in a lot of different ways. Right. Is, yeah. And great. Kristen, we didn't get input from you on the number of shoes that you have over there. <laughs> now we got Stella over here, we got Tara over here. <laughs> yeah. You have about three hundred also. No, I don't. How many? I do actually, you got? Don size. 
You all you downsized. <laughs> yeah. So what? Yeah. I, I, you got to give me a number. Um, I would say less than eighty. Less now. than eighty. Yeah. Wow. That's still. I a need ton to downsize. Of, us men <laughs> hate that. You know, you take up all our closet space with all those shoes in there. Right. And like I, I said, us men, we just need our, <laughs> we just need our sandals, our you know tennis shoes, and then a, two pairs of dress shoes, a black color and a brown color, and we're good to go. <laughs> that so. is very attractive. That sounds very simple to me. <laughs> the mornings are so complicated. I like to keep it simple. So. Shoe purge. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. right, got to wrap it up, Tara. Not Wilga and Kristen Seely uh, with uh, the Wine, Women, and Shoes event. Thank you, ladies, both uh, for being in studio this morning. And again, that uh, event is going to be held Friday, November 20th at the Renaissance Tampa International Plaza Hotel. Well, Stella, great show. Thank you also yeah. for being in studio with me today. And we're heading into and the weekend. And our friend Lynn here. And also your friend Lynn, back. yes. Headed into the weekend. So have a great weekend, everybody. You've been listening to That Business Show with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business.